Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about amino acids. It's biochemistry time. As you know, when you eat proteins, they become polypeptides, oligopeptides, dipeptides, and then amino acids. So while walking down the street, how can I pick an amino acid? How can I recognize the doofus? All right, the doofus will have an amino group on one side and a carboxyl group on the other side. And you have a carbon in between. This is called the alpha carbon. This carbon is attached to R, which is the side chain. And just to balance it, you have to add an H here because carbon requires four bonds. Amino group here, carboxyl group here. This is the side chain or the R group. And this is the one that determines the properties of the amino acids chemical properties that is does the order matter like should i write the amino here or here like does it matter amino first or carboxyl first yes of course it matters a comes before c in english right yep amino groups comes before the carboxyl group here's the beauty of the amino acids they have their amino group and their carboxyl group attached to the same freaking carbon known as the alpha carbon is there an exception of course every rule has exceptions this is gaba gaba stands for what gamma Amino butyric acid. Say it one more time because it was so beautiful. Gamma amino but Gamma. You know why we call it gamma? Yup, indeed. Because it's a gamma carbon, which is three carbons away from the carboxyl one. So after the carboxyl, you have alpha, and then you have beta, and then you have gamma carbon. In English, we read from left to right. Same thing with amino acids. We read from the amino group towards the carboxyl group. Why do we care? Because this is the order of the amino acid coming out of the freaking ribosome on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, if you remember. The ribosome makes the N-terminus first before the C-terminus. That's why we care. Here are amino acids, they become peptides, and then they become proteins. These are the macromolecules, these are the micromolecules. Polymers, monomers. Amino acids are divided into proteogenic and non-proteogenic amino acids. The difference was discussed in the previous video, in this playlist called MCAT Biochemistry. Each amino acid has a name, it has one letter abbreviation and a three letter abbreviation. Normally, you should have hemoglobin A. Sickle cell disease patients have hemoglobin S. What's the problem? A substitution. Instead of glutamic acid, now you have valine at amino acid number 6. Stereochemistry. All right, when you hear stereochemistry, just remember that this word is synonymous with stereogenicity, stereoisomers, chirals, rotation around the alpha carbon under the plane polarized light. All of these things mean the same thing. Let me rotate around the beautiful alpha carbon. You can rotate to the left or to the right. To the left, we call you levo. To the right, we call you dextro. Because the word dextro in Latin means right. How about left is levo or s? Why? Because sinister in Latin means left. So to the left is levo is s, to the right is dextro, which is r. Here is a very important tip for you. When you're talking about human beings or eukaryotes, you have the D sugar, but the L amino acid. What's that? The sugars in your body are D, which means they are rotating to the right. When you shine a plain polarized light on them, they will rotate it to the right. But your amino acids will rotate the light to the left. So in your body, you're always talking about D-glucose, D-whatever, D-whatever. With sugar, it's always D. But with amino acids, it's always L. So most amino acids in your body are chiral. Translation, to the right or to the left? To the left, we're talking about amino acids here. Okay, therefore S or R, S, Sinsta, left. Do you have any exceptions? Of course, cysteine is an exception. Why? Cysteine is rotating to the left. However, it's not S, it's R. Why is that? Because cysteine has CH2SH and this takes priority over the carboxyl group. And that's a story for another time. Look at this, what's that? Amino here. Oh, this is rotating to the left, therefore levo, therefore S. How about here? Oh, the amino's on the right side. This is right, this is dextro, this is R. In your body, do you have this one or this one? Of course I have the levo. The amino acids in your body are L. That's why your proteins are losers. I'm joking. Just to belabor the point of left versus right, in ophthalmology or optometry, the right eye is referred to as oculus dextrus or OD. The left eye is referred to as OS oculus sinister. Let's classify those doozy amino acids. First group, non-polar, non-aromatic side chains. This is alanine, this is glycine. Oh, by the way, glycine is the smallest amino acid. It's also achiral. Like it does not rotate? Nope. 
it does not. Why? Because it does not have an R, it just has an H. Then we have alanine, then the alkyl side chains, valine, leucine, isoleucine, then methionine, my favorite, has sulfur, it has methyl, and then proline, remember? Proline is the pentagon, because it looks like that. It is cyclic. What are the sulfur-containing amino acids in your body? The proteogenic are only two, methionine and cysteine. Next, aromatic side chain, amino acids, tryptophan and phenylalanine, which becomes tyrosine. All right, tryptophan, double ring and double whammy. Why? Because tryptophan can give you niacin, it can also give you serotonin, which will become melatonin. So it has two different pathways, as we have discussed before in my vitamins videos. Phenylalanine can give you tyrosine. How come? Just add an OH. You mean, uh, like, when I add an OH to phenylalanine, it becomes tyrosine? Yep. That's why phenylalanine is non-polar, relatively, but tyrosine is relatively polar. You know why? Because you added OH. No, duh. These two lovely amino acids have something called benzyl side chain. What the flip is benzyl? Benzene ring plus CH2 group. Do you remember the story of the adrenal medulla? Sure, phenylalanine, tyrosine, dopa, dopamine, nor epinephrine, epinephrine. You see that? That is SAM. Where did SAM come from? Methionine. What is SAM? A methyl group donor. Where did it get the methyl group? From methionine. Because methionine contains methyl, it also contains sulfur. Third group, amino acids that are polar with non-aromatic side chains. Let's go, serine, threonine. By the way, they have an OH. And then cysteine, it has thiol group. Thiol is SH. What are the two sulfur-containing proteogenic amino acids? Cysteine and methionine. Thank you. Amide side chains, aspargine, glutamine. Group number four, the negatively charged. Oh, these are acidic, baby. Therefore, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, they are acidic. And aspartic acid can give you aspartate, glutamic acid can give you glutamate when you deprotonate them. What do you mean by deprotonate? Remove an H. Aspartate and glutamate contain COO negative. You know why? Because the aspartic acid, glutamic acid had COOH. When you remove the H, hashtag deprotonation, you removed the freaking proton, you will end up with COO negative because the H is gone. So these are COO containing. How about aspartate and glutamine from the previous slide? They were amide containing. Group number five, the positively charged are basic. B with P, P with B and B with P. Examples, arginine, lysine, histidine. Arginine, three nitrogens. Lysine, terminal primary group, has NH3. We have great stories about lysine coming up next. And histidine, it has an imidazole ring. What's the flip is imidazole? Aromatic ring with two nitrogens. Two, not three. To remember that arginine has three nitrogens, you can say it R3 nine. Let's talk about the exceptions that we have discussed today. Amino acids have a minor group and carboxyl group attached to the alpha carbon. Thank you so much. Except GABA, gamma amino butyric acid. Why do you call it gamma? Because this is the gamma carbon. Your amino acid should be L, which means chiral. L and S. Except cysteine. It's L but R. We didn't talk about the chemical formulas in this video, but please make sure to review your chemical formulas. In the next video, we'll talk about lipid soluble versus water soluble. I'll tell you why these amino acids are amphoteric. And then we have great stories about the pH and the pKa. And what do you do if you have pKa1 and pKa2? And we'll study these crazy titration graphs. Do you remember valine, leucine, and isoleucine? Yep, they have alkyl side chain. They are also branched amino acids. What's the name of the enzyme that breaks them down? It's called branched chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase. And this enzyme is deficient in a disease known as maple syrup disease. If I don't have this enzyme, valine, leucine, and isoleucine will accumulate in my body, causing symptoms. So let's review maple syrup urine disease from Picmonic. Maple syrup urine is depicted by the maple syrup urinal. There is defect in alpha keto acid dehydrogenase, the broken afro key with acidic lemon dehydrator. What's going to happen? You will not be able to degrade and break down the three amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Leucine, here is leucine. Isoleucine, here is ice leucine. And valine, here is the veil. Symptoms include seizure, here is seizure, and intellectual disability, formerly mental retardation, here is the TARD book. For more wonderful mnemonics like this, go to picmonic.com slash vip hookup slash medicosis. 
question of the day is here try to answer it and you'll find the correct answer in the next video if you want to learn more about the ph check out my acid base imbalance course on my website medicosisperfectsnellis.com thank you for watching please subscribe hit the bell and click on the join button you can support me here or here go to my website to download my premium courses thank you for watching as always be safe stay happy study hard this is medicosis perfect Snellis, where medicine makes perfect sense